Hello, thank you for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arendon. Today I'm going to do a deep dive around Uranus's retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Now what I'm going to do is give you some insights into the energy of Uranus when it is in retrograde, but particularly in the sign of Taurus and what we can expect, how that can impact on us in general, but also I'm then going to provide a specific forecast for this event for your zodiac sign or if you know which house Uranus was in, in your natal horoscope for that too. If you don't know where Uranus was when you were born, please download your free natal horoscope below. Now, Uranus started to develop its relationship in the sign of Taurus in the middle of May 2018 through to the middle of October 2018. It came back into Taurus from Aries on the 6th of March 2019 and it's been there ever since. Now it's going to be in the sign of Taurus through to 2026. It's going to be traveling backwards in this particular retrograde through to the 14th of January when it will get back to six degrees in the sign of Taurus. So what is Uranus about? Now of course some people say Uranus. Um, I'm more comfortable with Uranus. Now, Uranus is a radical influence. It's the co-ruler of the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius energy has a duality to it. If you think about it, if we read in sort of like um, tabloid star magazines about astrology, often a, a, a Aquarius people are described as being quite wacky, eccentric, changeable, and that's all the energy of Uranus. Of course, it's much more nuanced than that. The sign of Aquarius has a duality to it because the other ruler is Saturn, which of course is very much about stability, tradition. And Aquarius people often have these two energies coexisting, so it can be progressive, but also can be very much welded to the past because of course it's a fixed sign. But the sign of Aquarius, which Uranus governs, essentially in its highest form, and every sign has the potential to scrape the barrel or to be much better. So in terms of its purest form, the sign of Aquarius is about truth. It's about idealism. It is about the big picture. It's about what's best for person kind. So the glyph of the water carrier essentially is about baptism. So Uranus is how we can change things for the better. But to do that, we have to have a sense or an appreciation of truth. And Aquarius energy can be quite searching and demanding in terms of us as individuals. But the problem is that most of us are not that comfortable with examining our motives with a great deal of scrutiny. Um, it can be uncomfortable sometimes to lift up uh, uh, a stone and peer underneath in our uh, beings to see what is there. So Uranus in Aquarius at its very best asks us to be trailblazers for that sense of honesty. So in the sign of Taurus, which of course is also a fixed sign, but where Uranus is in its full, so this is its least effective position in its journey, it is in opposition with the point in the zodiac where uh, it can really shine, which is in the sign of Scorpio, because there it is exalted. And that is because of the transformational energies that come from the sign of Scorpio, the potential for change. And Uranus loves change, but of course Taurus is very much more concerned with stability, foundations, consistency. So although Scorpio is fixed, we do have, along with Aquarius, we do have a kind of paradox but both Scorpio and Aquarius energies, although they're fixed, can eventually welcome change in quite radical ways. So we mustn't get too bogged down in this fixed thing for those two signs, but we can be much more conscious of it in terms of Taurus. So Taurus energy is about that stability. And because it's stationed at 10 degrees when it goes into retrograde, it has just moved into the second decan because it's 10 degrees 31, I think. I can check that shortly. So it's just into the second decan, 
So if we think of the Earth sign uh, in terms of the triplicity, the next Earth sign is, of course, Virgo, and the ruling planet of that is Mercury. So this uh, retrograde begins just when Uranus is in the second decan. But as it goes into retrograde, it's going to soon uh, move backwards into the first decan of Taurus, which is governed by Venus, and very much about relationships. Now, I feel that the Aquarius full moon that happened earlier in August is particularly important to this event because it was T-squaring the sun's location in Leo, which is very much about the self, creativity, individuality, whereas Aquarius energy, where the moon was, is very much about us as a, as a, a, total, uh, a total group. So Uranus has been very provocative in both ways. We've got some people really wanting to break the rules in a group, or some people will want to break the rules, be rebellious through Uranus, in terms of their individuality. So I feel that that uh, full moon is very important to this particular Uranus retrograde. But we can't deny that Mercury, which is also exalted in the sign of Aquarius, where it is uh, the ruler of the second decan of Aquarius, we can't uh, deny the fact that communication is going to be extremely important to this event. And of course, the new moon, uh, which occurs in Leo on the 18th, 19th, depending where you are in the world of August, is also in conjunction with Mercury. So we've got a lot of electric energy. So if we think about Uranus in terms of technology, uh, innovation, uh, breaking three of what's holding us back because of the more limiting energy of Taurus, which is about resistance to change, I think we are going to see lots of energies working their way around the structure of the Earth. So we could see some earthquakes, unfortunately. We could see a tsunami, I feel that is it possible, because of the opposition to where it's exalted in Scorpio, which of course is a water sign. So we could say, see, if you like, the tectonic plates shifting in some way because of the restless, eruptive energy of Uranus. And that's uh, providing or, or, or receiving resistance from the Earth of Taurus. And that could see an outlet through the water of Scorpio. I think that is possible between now and the 14th of January. Don't want that to happen. I think it's possible. The other area that I think we're going to see quite a lot of global interaction around is anything to do with food distribution, growing food. Um, of course, there's a lot of controversy about how we're clearing uh, the Amazon, for example. It's not just there. It goes on in Eastern Europe as well, uh, where we have illegal logging. So that's rule breaking, very Uranus in a way, being going against what's expected in terms of the more Saturnian, sticking to what's regulated. Um, but I also feel that we could see things around intensive farming. Uh, some people are going to kick back about the, against this very, very strongly. Other people will want to embrace it. We've got a trade deal that's being discussed, apparently, between Britain and the US, and some members of the government seem to be open to having a very... Uh, a very free arrangement, which is very Uranus, but that could mean a lowering of food standards. So that kind of stuff is also going to be greatly discussed over this period of time. Now Uranus itself takes 84 years to go through its cycle, and it was last in the sign of Taurus between 1934 and 1942, which obviously was a radical time in world history. Um, in terms of, uh, we had the Spanish uh, revolution um, then or civil war I should say and then of course we had the second world war and then we had the cold war and one of the interesting things about Uranus and because of the Aquarius energy is the sense of detachment a dystopian energy of detachment can develop over this next six months not least because Covid is seeing a lot of home working which at first may have seemed very attractive both to employers and employees, but it breaks down physical contact, it breaks down intimacy. Again, very Uranus detached. So we may earn our money, which of course Taurus governs, but in a way 
which sees us much less assembled and mingling with others. And I do think that this trend is going to become more marked as Jupiter and Saturn move into Aquarius and go into a conjunction on the winter uh, solstice, which will occur on the 21st of December this year. So we're going to see more of this kind of push towards uh, a more deregulated way of working and being, which won't necessarily all be a panacea to all that Capricornian stuff. There's going to be lots of pushes and pulls and strains. It's not necessarily going to be all for human betterment, in my humble opinion. So, how does Uranus retrograde work then? Well, Uranus retrograde is asking us to look more inside, I feel. So, if we think that Uranus going forwards is more of an external implication, which affects all of us, it's a higher octave planet, so therefore generational influence. But I feel here in its retrograde, it's asking us to dig deep down and get a clearer understanding of what our true values are, which is what's governed by Taurus. It's not just about enjoying good food, good wine, um, merriment, which is very Venus in Taurus, but it's also an appreciation of who we are, our identities, and the core of our identities, which is governed by Taurus in a kind of consistent way, is being changed and rocked and reeled. So some key words that came up for me were rebellion, change, revolution, truth, but equally resistance because of the fixed energy of Taurus. So it's the time to deconstruct what's not working for us, not serving our purpose any longer. But as I said earlier, not all of us will find it easy to embrace the real truth of our journey in this life. That means being really honest with ourselves. There's so much chatter these days, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, so much opining going on. But I think the Aquarius energy of Uranus is about that detachment, it's about reflection, it is about trying to find the true purpose of what we're about. So I think it is going to be important during this period of time through to the 14th of January to really grapple with those strands within ourselves. Now on the 7th, 8th and 19th of October and then again on the 17th of November Uranus is going to be in opposition with Mercury. Mercury is going to go through the third of its watery retrogrades, uh, a kind of like, a, what did I call it a, f a couple of weeks ago? It's a kind of splosher-thon that's gone on this year because we've had, we will have three watery retrogrades, Pisces, Cancer, and then in Scorpio. And in fact, on the 19th of October, Mercury will still be in retrograde as it goes into opposition with Uranus. Now, because of the electrical factor that we can get with Uranus and the technological side of things, there could be something that happens, a storm, some kind of intensity that mounts around those dates, but particularly the 19th of October, maybe some hidden truths will be pushed out into the open. In terms of the angularities, obviously the signs of Taurus, where it's hosted, conjunction, uh, Leo square, so I actually have in my natal horoscope an absolute square at the moment on this particular event. In my natal, uh, Uranus is in Leo. And then we obviously have Scorpio, the other end, the polarity of the, op of the conjunction in the opposition. And of course the final square is in the sign of Aquarius. So those signs could feel this particularly keenly because of the fixed energy of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius. And if you are a fixed sign and you do resist change, and especially if you are a Taurus, this could be quite a trying time if you don't try to go with the flow, let things rinse out that aren't working. Now of course Uranus can be very fast moving, so sudden flashes of inspiration, seeing things differently, understanding why, why we want to detach from some people but connect to others. Sometimes that will be people that in the past we wouldn't have dreamt of spending time with. Associations and affiliations are going to be changing. If you've got the moon, the ascendant, the sun, uh, anywhere connected in this retrograde, so from 10 degrees through to about 4 degrees, 
in Taurus. If any of those are connected in a conjunction, square, opposition, you're going to feel this keenly, even if it's not affecting your sun uh, precisely. It can affect the moon, the ascendant, and of course other critical positions in your natal horoscope. Please download your free horoscope below. So, this is an exciting opportunity really to unlock more self-truth, but that may mean changing something that we've been quite comfortable with. It's kind of a bit like having a pair of comfy old slippers, Taurus energy. Um, they may actually serve a purpose, but actually if we look a bit closer, uh, they could have some holes in them, might be a bit whiffy even. It's trying, time to freshen things up. Uranus can be about new innovations, new possibilities, and that can be just as much about our relationships, about where we live, about our interests, about how we work, which for most people is being affected by the fallout from COVID. You know, we're seeing certain strands of certain types of industries really being battered and you know for example uh, anything to do with bricks and mortar retail which very physical the physical presence of a shop so that's very tourist in a way especially if it's selling anything that's remotely gooey or calorifically nice like a cake shop or a nice coffee shop well the cost of of covid is having a radical impact we're seeing many people losing their jobs sadly so all of us need to be continually flexing and open to new ways of doing things we can't just stay as we are but the journey essentially is about truth because that is the higher aquarius energies and that is the sign that uranus governs i'm going to share the event chart briefly so you can see that when uranus went retrograde it was actually 1041 not 31 apologies for that it was also forging that lovely sextile to Venus and the Moon in Cancer, which occurred on Saturday. So that points towards the potential for change around home, or I think relationships particularly. If you are in a relationship which is not going so well, because as soon as uh, Uranus does go back into the first 10 degrees of, uh, of uh, Taurus, it's back into that first decan which is governed by Venus, relationships. So relationships are going to be really a big part for many of us, I think, the type of relationships we want. Now, if we look at the Uranus direct chart, this is really fascinating too because it kind of repeats the full moon that occurred earlier this month on the 3rd of August. So if we see here, there was Uranus at 10 degrees, and there's the moon at 11 and the sun in Leo 11. So we get that T square. So if we go forwards to when it goes direct on January the 14th, guess what? We've got Uranus squaring the moon. It's three degrees, about two and a quarter degrees actually. And it's also squaring Jupiter. And on this event chart, which is based on Universal Central Time, it is in fact, uh, uh, in a square with the ascendant in Aquarius it does remarkably forge a lovely trine with Venus so at the outset of this retrograde it's in a lovely sextile with Venus at the end of it it's in a lovely trine but it is being influenced hugely it's having a huge impact on the moon and you can see Mercury is there as well big stellium of energies that we've got in Aquarius at on the 14th of uh, January 2021. So I think we are going to see this Uranus retrograde bring forward a lot of radical new ways of being. It's going to accelerate it. So the retrograde may seem to some people it's going to slow things down. I actually think it's going to accelerate it. So in terms of uh, your uh, sign, if your sign is Aries or your house number is one, it is all about those resources. It's all about your self-worth. You know, are there ways in which you can use your resources, your, your creativity, your individuality, particularly with Mars, if you are an Aries, in your sign through uh, pretty well to this event, through to the 6th of January, in fact, your drive, your determination to make changes. Yes, you've got all that resistance with Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, but Uranus is really saying to you, truly be open-minded. Don't just stick with what you know because it feels safe. 
Taurus, I think for you, since 2008, Pluto's been pushing you to embrace change. Since 2017, in December, even more so with Saturn. And then Jupiter came along at the end of last year as well. So now this year you've had a big stellium of energy pushing you to change along with Uranus in your sign. I'm afraid that staying exactly as you are is just not going to be an option. You have to go with the flow. If you resist it, it's going to create a lot of tension, a lot of headaches, a lot of frustration. And you're going to feel really quite fed up at times, I feel. It is time to just let go of that very powerful need you have for uh, consistency. Now, Gemini, I think, to be honest, this retrograde can be tricky for you. You're not a fixed sign, so you're not on the angles, but it is in your 12th solar house, and that's to do with the subconscious, to, to do with your nervous system, Uranus. It's to do with um, the things you fear, but you may not necessarily be articulating or even conscious of, because you live through the prism of air, the elements of air. So debate and, and jesting and, and being very quick-witted is part of your way of being but maybe Uranus is pushing you to delve deeper down into what really is important to you. Get rid of a lot of the white noise around you. If you find yourself feeling jaded, stressed, frustrated, have a clear out. Perhaps even try to release a lot of old energies that have been uh, perhaps uh, that you've clung on to, even if they are injustices, because remember Aquarius energy very much to do with fairness and maybe there has been a lot of unfairness but try to let go. Now that was for Gemini in the third house, for Taurus it was Taurus in the second house, now for Cancer it's Cancer or the fourth house. Now of course you've got Mars high in the sky which has given you a, a tremendous amount of authority and Uranus in this location is pushing you towards new friends, new interests but things can change suddenly it can be exciting, but also exhilarating, but also hugely unsettling if things aren't going on course in a, in a rather progressive way. Uh, this is kind of a bit towerish when it comes to the tarot, I feel. But remember, the tower can be a good card because it only bring, brings uh, uncertainty where the foundations aren't very good anyway. So some kind of big change is definitely going on in your life especially with that pack, the posse in Capricorn opposing you. So it's around your relationships, around your work, and I think it's around your long-term future and friendships. It's all up for discussion with you, Cancer, or the fourth house, which is uh, a very tender location to have Uranus. Now, Leo, Leo or Uranus in the fifth house. For you, Uranus is in your sector of work and how you interact with the world at large. And of course, having Mars in the ninth house can be making you very desirous of a change anyway. And because it's in a square with that posse in Capricorn, you're really getting cheesed off with the status quo, especially if you're always having to put other people first. So I feel for you, this is really saying, look, is there a new house you want to live in, the tenth house? Are there different relationships you want with people who are authority figures in your life? parents or even your kids if you want more freedom from them or is a job no longer serving your purpose and you need to be flexible and open to doing things in a different way because you're a fixed sign and you're affected by the angularity of this not so easy for you go with the flow same if you've got the fifth house Uranus Virgo for you Uranus is in the ninth house asking you to think about technology higher education overseas connections, anything to do with philosophy, you're being pushed to look at things in a very diff different way. Because your sign is very much concerned with the immediate, the immediate environment, the precision, the detail of things, what Uranus is asking you to is look up, look around, breathe in, see what you can download from this Uranus retrograde to your benefit. And I think it's going to be knowledge. And that knowledge, because traveling is not so easy at the moment, although you may have a desperate need for that. And if you are lucky enough to be in a place that's coping better with COVID and you can get out of your normal environment, do it. 
quickly uh, before it gets shut down again because you are going to be feeling restless so that's going to be true of Virgo or the sixth house Uranus. Seventh house and Libra this Uranus position is the eighth house which is to do with where you're deeply invested so it's a more psychological position it's business it's money it's your relationship with your bank your mortgage provider it could be your relationship in a sexual context you could find yourself having a bit of a fling quite unexpectedly or wanting to break free from something that's no longer serving your greater purpose Scorpio this Uranus is in your seventh house so if you have uh, Uranus in Scorpio or in the eighth house this is very much for you so I feel that you're someone who kind of has very constant periods in your life then you have massive changes and of course they are going to be punctuated across those 84 years so at 42 years we get one and at 21 years we get one and we could go at 11 and a half and so on so I think it depends on where you are in your life journey but I think yeah you've probably been in some ways sticking with some way of being perhaps it's staying in a relationship which just really bores uh, the life out of you. This could be also true if you have a Scorpio ascendant or moon and Uranus is seeing you crave some excitement, some, some unpredictability, which is Uranus is about. Especially if a partner you've got is just so stable, you're actually desperate for something just to happen off the cuff. Well, make it happen yourself. Sagittarius, this Uranus retrograde occurs in your sixth house or if you have the sixth house Uranus in your natal chart this is about how you think about work, your health, your fitness, your diet, your organization. N new technology can be very good for you actually, it can liberate you to do things in different ways. So because you're a very future orientated sign anyway you might be someone who's really into technology or artificial intelligence and things like this if it can free you up to do other things. But I also feel this is asking you to take care of yourself. And if your nervous system feels a bit stressed out, early nights are going to be important. That brings us to Capricorn and, of course, the 10th house. So the 10th house is about work, responsibility, obligations, the father. Um, it can be to do with career success, goals, and so forth. And for you, I feel, Capricorn, it's more about your love life. It's more about your creativity are you are you really feeling stale in your particular personal situation are you not engaging with the interests that really excite you do you never find yourself kicking your heels up or whooping or having a laugh or doing something crazy just spontaneous because you're so responsible or you know are you just going on through the motions in, in some relationships in your life have a clear out Freshen things up. Have the courage to make some changes. With Mars in your fourth house, you're probably being pushed to do this anyway, quite frankly. Aquarius, now, of course, for you, Uranus is your ruler. So I think since the middle of May 2018, if it's anything like me, you've had issues in your family. Um, not because your family are necessarily bad people, but maybe they just don't get you. Or they're not very outward looking, maybe they're very inward, maybe they're very caught up with the Torah stuff, the material stuff, and you're seeing the big picture, and you're a leader, and you're a visionary, and so that's really frustrated you, but it's also pushing you to let go of the bonds that don't actually support you, don't nurture you, don't really care that much about your feelings, because they're not awake, they're just sleepwalking, let them go, clear out, the same if you're an 11th house Uranus person, very Aquarius. Yeah, just shake it all up. If some friendships no longer fit the bill, change them. Which brings us to Pisces. Now this is interesting because this is your third house for you Pisces, which is very much to do with ideas, expression. You could find yourself drawn, funnily enough, to Aquarian people. Um, you might find yourself drawn to some Taurus folk as well, actually, because the third house is very much about sharing ideas, connectivity, and the brighter and the bubblier and actually a bit zanier they are, the more you'll laugh and enjoy it, especially if 
at times you do feel that you're just existing in a kind of bubble, a dream world, where, yes, your reality is very enriching for you, but you need more to come in, to punctuate, to push you out of it a bit, you know, shake you up. So, and of course, if it's the 12th house, Uranus in the 12th house is a bit like the Gemini energy that's going on this time. So I feel, yeah, for, for the 12th house, it's some psychological energy could be moving around, a lot of nervous tension and so forth and so on. So it's about becoming much more truthful about what the source of that tension is and trying to cut it out. So liberation is the key word for Uranus retrograde, but it is in the face of the Taurus energy seeing us cling on to what we know. So we can find ourselves almost making changes, clinging on, all at the same time. So you can feel like you're being pushed. So you're holding out your hands and your legs and you're being pulled and it's, yes, it's quite uncomfortable. Um, but that's going to be the energy for us all, broadly, over this period of time. Please see below if you'd like to book a one-to-one -one reading with me. Check out my testimonials. Also, if you'd like to ascend above, uh, your zodiac sign, you can download that free natal horoscope or order a special offer, 30% off, 12 month forecast and character analysis, again by seeing the link below. For now, please stay safe, take care, good luck and goodbye.